Let's talk about how the FBI obtained a search warrant to search Mar-a-Lago. I'm Diane Bass, I'm a criminal defense attorney. I've been practicing in federal court for the last 25 years or more, handling federal criminal cases, and many of those cases, hundreds of cases, involving search warrants. So I wanted to share my experience with you about how the feds are able to obtain a search warrant. What is the process? What goes into it? How does this come about? So first of all, by the time a federal agency, and let's just say the FBI, since the Mar-a-Lago search is on everyone's mind right now, the FBI is usually engaged in an investigation for quite some time before they get a search warrant. So they have a lot of work done on the case. They have interviewed witnesses. They have reviewed documents. They have spoken to any number of people and they understand the case. They know what they're looking for and where it might be. This information is based on credible sources. So Donald Trump had previously turned over a bunch of boxes of documents that he had at Mar-a-Lago that he took from the White House, which he should not have taken. However, there were still remaining documents. They issued a subpoena, which is a court order. So you can't just ignore a subpoena. That is contempt. A court orders a subpoena to be issued. You have to comply. And this, this goes for testimony, turning over documents, whatever is asked for in the subpoena. So he was subpoenaed and asked to turn over the rest of the boxes, which he did not comply with. That's contempt. Then a reliable source from inside the Trump administration notified the investigating agency that there were additional documents located at Mar-a-Lago. So the FBI, the agent will write what's called an affidavit. Now this affidavit can be a hundred pages long. We as the public do not get the opportunity to see the affidavit, at least not yet. It is usually sealed. The portion of the affidavit that was made public is really just the face page, the place to be searched, and the items to be found. What goes along with that document when it is presented to a judge is the affidavit of the agent. So let's say there's one agent who's writing the affidavit. This person states his name, how long he's been with the FBI, his training, his experience, how many cases like this he's handled, how long he's been working on this case, and all of the relevant facts and circumstances surrounding this particular case. Then the affidavit goes on to say why they believe these documents will be found in this specific location and why they need permission to go to this residence to have permission to look in any place where boxes may be hiding and get these documents. The judge then is given this affidavit by the FBI agent. So the FBI agent will walk into federal court, will hand the document to usually a federal magistrate judge. The magistrate will review the affidavit and decide independently whether he or she believes that there is probable cause to believe that these items will be found at this location and that the search is warranted. Probable cause is one of the lowest standards in the law. Probable cause essentially means probably. There is probably, they are probably going to find these documents or these boxes at this location. Once the judge signs the search warrant, it is again a legal document. It is essentially a court order telling the individual that the FBI or whatever agency is involved has the right to search the premises for these items. At that point in time, usually if there are individuals in the home or the premises or the office, wherever they're searching, they're asked to sit down. They're not usually handcuffed. It's a very cordial situation. And the feds go about their business of searching in all of the different locations where they think that the documents could be hidden. They then have the right to take those items. What we've also seen, what has been revealed publicly, is an inventory sheet. So anytime an item is taken from somebody's property, somebody's home, somebody's office, the agency is supposed to give an inventory list. So everything that was taken from the home has to be written down, has to be documented. So if there is something, for instance, not related to the criminal investigation or to the search, that will ultimately be returned to the individual from whom it was taken. So it is a very detailed process. 
Also, when an investigation is going on, especially an investigation like this, there is a very good possibility that this has gone all the way up the food chain. In this case, we know that Merrick Garland personally authorized the request for the search warrant. So he didn't sign the search warrant. He didn't issue the search warrant. A judge did. So this is not a witch hunt. This is not just the feds acting out. This is not revenge and this is not political. This is based on extensive investigation. And let me say, as a criminal defense attorney, the feds are very professional. FBI agents are usually lawyers or accountants or have had some sort of professional career prior to entering the FBI. They are intelligent, they are professional, and they know what they're doing. So they're just not cowboys out there, you know, slinging their rifles around. These are guys who have done their homework and they have a reason to be doing what they're doing. And in this case, they were right. They found confidential documents that should never have left the White House that could have exposed this country to national security issues. There were apparently nuclear documents in Donald Trump's house. And so this investigation is very, very interesting. I'm Diane Bass, I'm a criminal defense lawyer in California. And if you found this interesting, please subscribe and like. My contact information is in the description below.